Bro. So <laughs> it has started now, Cameron. So um, has it indeed? Yeah, all right. So welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, welcome to the Vaping Ewe's first podcast. This is going to be an audio only podcast. I may upload the video footage on YouTube at a later stage if I need to. Um, but it'd be pretty boring to just watch us talk for a good and solid and hour and drink and vape. vape and you know whatnot. Um, so on today's podcast, we will be covering quite a few things, uh, varying from the 2700 mods, uh, all the way through to a couple things about nicotine as well as, uh, some accessories and applications you can use on your phone in order to help you with vaping. Uh, so I think we're going to start off with, uh, Cameron introducing himself and then I will go through me. And then we will continue on with this sh- this podcast. I mean, ho- hopefully they've watched the videos and stuff, and they know who both of us are. But um, if you don't know, I'm Cam, uh, also known as Kiwi Vapes Around. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, we will post our Instagram and stuff as well when we do post this. So if you guys want to check out our stuff, uh, feel free to. And um, I guess we can kind of talk what we're vaping on. Uh, I mean, we can't show you, so might as well just say it. Rocking the uh, arms race today with the Aria Sleeper. And I am vaping on some American juice, some Fuggin' Ooh. Vapors OJ Creamson. And how's that juice going, Cameron? It's it's delicious, man. Reminds me of like a Fanta with ice cream. So like, you know, the Fanta Spider. Very nice, it's, very it's nice. Really nice. Today I am vaping on uh, the Endo with the Elite V2, uh, and I'm vaping some Renaissance Bonbon. Um, but yeah, so my name's Tom. If you haven't already watched the show, then I'm also known as Renaissance Vapes. Um, but yeah, if you haven't watched our show, go watch our show on YouTube. Uh, we live stream every Monday night uh, in New Zealand time. So basically, it's just another way for you to see see us instead of just hear us um but yeah so on that note cameron shall we dive down and move on to our first subject which i believe today is the new ijoy captain pd 270 uh box mod yeah i I really don't get why it's called the pd 270 nor do i but i mean the 270 i guess is to go with the 2700s you know like it's a bit of an indication that that's it Personally, I believe they could have just called it the iJoy Captain, but, you know, whatever they want. Um, so this is, uh, it's a new uh, device, basically, by uh, by iJoy. It's a uh, dual 2700 uh, battery mod. Uh, it's capable of 234 watts. Uh, so a bit higher than the usual dual battery 200 watt mods. Um, and... Um, it is not in New Zealand at the moment, but it will be soon, not I yet. believe. Very not soon. yet. Uh, it. I'm just quickly going to look up what it stands for. So P is on behalf of the high performance. D is on behalf of the dual batteries. And the 270 is on behalf of the 2700 batteries. This is from iJoy. So <coughs> that's that's what all that means. So it's good that we've kind of gotten that out of the way um, yeah i mean as as we've been talking about before we we started this chat i mean the the 2700s really are the way of the future and they are a big step a very yeah. very big step uh being able to get 3000 milliamps with a 30 amp or 31000 milliamp with a 30 amp uh discharge yeah dude that's that's crazy it's like a dream compared to 20 uh to 18650s personally i don't believe that 18650s are going to be alienated and no, and removed no. from the equation due to the size factor um 18650s are slightly smaller so you can have slightly smaller mods and so on and so forth um most 2700 mods that i've seen so far are 30 mil uh diameter mods so they look real cool with a 30 mil RDA or 30 mil tank on there. Uh, anything smaller looks a bit different, let's say, because it's got quite a bit of underhang. Um, it'd be like putting a 20 mil on top of the endo, really. And that's, yeah, well, a 22, you know, and that's that's kind of weird looking. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I enjoy being one of the first companies to really 
have a, a mass produced uh, 2700 mod is pretty impressive. Uh, personally, I like the design of it. I, I find it I find it very reminiscent of the uh, cuboid. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, it's kind of like they've got the the predator from uh, Wismac. Wismac, the Wismac predator and the cuboid, and kind of made a mod that's shaped like the predator, but doesn't have the whole trigger system sort of thing yeah i mean um, it, it does look very similar to a cuboid yeah you know it's bar the button which is massive on this thing it's a it's a huge square button on the side um bar that it really does look like a cuboid um personally i would have loved to have seen a centered 510 pin instead of a off center uh just with 30 mil tanks and stuff it would have looked a bit nicer yeah. Um, but again, there's not going to be any overhang with a 30 mil tank, so it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, I like the the different options available as well, because there's going to be like carbon fiber and then like snake skin and all sorts of stuff. Uh, and then the metal itself is going to be all sorts of colors, uh, varying from black to rainbow to gunmetal to, you know, whatever else they release in time. Um, but we shall indeed see which direction this heads in i don't know if you've had a look at the uh the, the specs of the thing itself but 0.05 ohm all the way to 3.0 ohms resistance yep. on the coils which that's that's a big step man i remember when 0.1 like even before that but 0.1 was like well is at the moment the current threshold really for yeah um, there, there's some mods like um the snow wolves that have always and gone below point one dna's yeah and the dna's that go below point one as well but um seeing newer mods coming out with point zero five is is quite nice as well um so you can you can use 18650s in this mod as well uh if you don't have any 2700s handy uh, so that is something that that I find is important just for the you know like for example us Kiwis who don't necessarily have access to that latest technology uh, straight away uh, I think that's something that's very important well thought out in terms of iJoy's behalf uh, they've definitely done a good job making sure that it still works with backwards compatibility as well plus if you're like myself and you own like 30 plus 18650s you know why buy 2700s when you can just use your 18650s in the mod yeah exactly it's not like everyone's going to go throw out all their 18650s and mm. just start buying 2700s straight off the bat sort of thing so it's yeah. nice to have that option of going between them <clears throat> so definitely for sure it's a great thing yeah so cam on that note i believe we should move on to our next subject of today uh which is the smock gx2 slash four um so oh, yeah basically think of the gx350 but with the option of running it in dual battery mode or quad battery mode um so this this i'm actually looking forward to personally Same. i i didn't mind my my gx350 it is gone now but i didn't use it too much that's why i got rid of it, it it's not overly bulky or anything and it's the same form factor with this two by four uh, so in the dual cell state, so two 18650s, it will be capped at 220 watts. Uh, and then when you add the, uh, basically they call it the expansion cover, uh, with two extra cells, it will go up to 350 watts. Um, so I don't know if you, you're looking at it right now as well, but indeed. mate, in dual battery mode, it, it actually looks quite nice. It's yeah, like it a like a mini h prev almost yeah yeah pretty much it's kind of like um well they've taken the idea of the rx two thirds and expanded it on it and made it a bit bigger as yeah as it's seen. it's kind of like the um rx 200 s was that it no the two bar three two -third, yeah yeah two so it's it's the two thirds but just now it's two quarters yeah it's <laughs> it's oh, definitely yeah it's it's a a very nice looking device um, I find it a bit weird though having the screen on the side when when it's in quad battery mode like it looks a bit different having the screen just like on one of the four sides um, but you know it's not like they could have changed that in any way and put the screen on top or anything like that but that's that's fine um, 
it does it does seem that it's going to be only coming as, as a kit included with the uh tfv8 big baby um i think that's a little bit mm, in my opinion like you've you've got the possibility of 350 watts dude and yeah you the a, a mod that well a tank that can't really go up yeah. to that full capacity i mean let's be honest who's going to use the bloody big baby with this thing you know you're going to chuck a <coughs> rda True. on there pretty much straight away um but hold on so no so they will be doing just the mod as well um which is going to be nice it's going to be available in gold purple silver black so all the standard smock colors that they've been doing in the past as well um and you know with the whole uh european compliance thing um that's i think that's why they're going with a big baby beast true uh because it's a two mil tank oh no so you have two options sorry my bad so uh it includes a five mil big baby beast but it all they are also offering an eu compliant kit with a two mil big baby beast so that'd be interesting to see you know having having one version that's actually got like a real short big baby yeah. beast so and then the other one's a standard one it's like when they brought the o sub with the brit beast tank on top mm. pretty much just just on a with, with better coils i guess you'd say yeah yeah I guess that's that's where they're going with that but um definitely you know smock has definitely made a lot of moves recently in terms of bringing out new stuff um i don't know if you've seen the um the concept ones for the new hprev and the new uh gx350 that look yeah, real yeah, got some really exciting things coming out dude it looks real like alien almost like alien artifact style <laughs> yep. with the leds kind of running through it and stuff like that but yeah we'll we'll see if that's a possible actual you know like a retail version does end up coming out or not but um it's definitely something to keep our eyes open on um obviously there's new mods and stuff being released on a daily basis um but moving on from that um how about we talk about the limitless mod co pulse uh, so Ooh. Limitless Mod Co and Ply Rock, Ply, Ply Rock, P L Y Rock, have um, have Rock, yeah. partnered up and and made this this new kind of I'd call it my almost like jewel. a yeah my jet jewel style vape, um, and it's called the Pulse System. Uh, so it's draw activated, uh, just like the the jewel and the my jet. So there is no physical button to actually uh, vape. Uh, it is when you draw in that it that it vapes um what i like is the fact that the pods are refillable so they're not trying to go on this whole tangent of trying to, to buy the pods yeah too. yeah because i've i've seen that being done in the past as well and granted it's it's one way of doing it but it gets expensive especially if you vape a lot um and it does come with two unfilled pods uh when you buy the kit itself um and the kit retails for about 40 dollars new zealand so not too bad a uh, pack of three refillable pods would be about 15 dollars new zealand so that's that's not too bad yeah i mean the the, the kind of interesting thing though is the 3800 uh, 380 milliamps sorry uh, yeah battery as well as the maximum output of eight watts yeah um one mil juice capacity on the pods which you know you're not going to go through that that quick not not in such watts. a device yeah and it's between i believe 1.7 and 1.8 ohm coils so you know it's going to last you quite a while on one charge yeah for sure um i do i do like the design of it personally it's got led Same, accents yeah. so they they are i believe rgb leds and you can change you can change color of the leds uh to varying colors um so that that i think is quite nice um if you if you want to think about the design of it, it personally i find that it, it looks a bit futuristic but at the same time it sort of has those like lamborghini reventon lines you know like real real yeah. sharp edges real kind of triangled off it's it's like uh, to to put it into a movie sense it's like a tron bike meets a car <laughs> in <Definitely>. a vein. <laughs> yeah so it's it's like a high-end car looking tron bike yeah yeah 
for sure especially with the the lights man the, those lights are definitely like yeah, tron so, style um it does have seven colors to go between as well as the stealth mode so you can have it with no lights on mm. if you were to vape somewhere you shouldn't which which you shouldn't anyway but, yeah you know. exactly um as far as what people are saying about them so the people who have tried them uh, they're saying it's a gr it's a good device. Um, the draw is fairly restrictive, though, so similar to a Nautilus or a Nautilus X tank. Um, so, in terms of the flavor, a lot of people are saying that when the battery is fully charged, it's pretty good. Um, but as the charge decreases, the flavor seems to deteriorate. Yeah. So that's something probably to do with the fact that they're only using a three hundred eighty milliamp hour battery um and the type of battery that they're using so it wouldn't it wouldn't continue on with the appropriate amount of power through that coil uh which would cause a decrease in flavor but you know that's fine i mean i i watched a review on it from uh, grim green and um he he loved the thing dude that the flavor he was getting yeah. off of, well obviously it was fully charged so the flavor yeah. he was getting was great the, the um, thing though we, is like i mean if you're flavor chasing you're not going to be going for something yeah, like that yeah, exactly. anyway so this is you know. like one of those less abrasive sort of it's it's more starter kit for, you know or well, or discreet exactly. vape in town you yeah, know yeah, exactly. not obnoxious clouds into the people walking behind you's faces the only other thing that kind of um he stated was you get an occasional dry hit depending on what sort of uh ratio you're using yeah so, i mean but that's that's standard with most of these things um, exactly yeah and i mean you can always do what i did with the my jet and drill out the airflow hole if it's not to your liking but that obviously yeah. does void the warranty. something something that's weird that i find as well is that the wicking material that they use in the pods themselves is silica so silica wicking has been around since basically vaping started that's what was in cartomizers and so on and so forth and it's weird that there's still devices now in 2017 using a silica wicking material because but of its flavor accuracy more than anything else also wicking the wicking on it is seems to be a lot better than cotton in the in this sort of format yes in, in that format it would be but but it's a case of also you know silica wicking isn't necessarily the best for flavor no. um and then as far as you know like vaping wise you probably cotton cotton does seem to do just a little bit better oh, in yeah. in general not just in flavor department but yeah so on that note i think we should move on to the inakin i taste chroma kit this is something i've actually been looking forward to man like personally it's a nice little smallish mod nice and percy for when you're out and about 2000 million battery yeah vaping up to 75 watts like you know you're not going to use that when you're walking around town you're not going to hit that 75 watts so it nah. should last you a good amount of time as well yeah um shape of them the style of them mm, they, they are really really nice looking mods especially for their size um standard 510 as per usual now that's pretty much so the they code. do come with a tank as well that that basically recesses so it's yeah. it's got this recess in it where you can have your tank inside the mod and you've just got the top uh, uh of the tank poking out but it does come with a 510 adapter that you can screw on there and you can use any tank including the slipstream tank which is the one that comes with it on top of the device um so it's nice that you have the options as well like it doesn't just restrict you to using their proprietary tank that slips yep. down into the, the sleeve um and the tank is a bu, 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 it doesn't say whether it's a 22 or twin it is a 20.5 millimeter diameter. ah there we go so if you were to find a tank that was around that which highly doubtful you will be able to find something of that diameter but if you were to you could use it recessed as well uh, in which case it could look nice as a like a little stealthy kind of stealthy bait um not too bad on design as well i like it. it's mm -hmm. like a like a gun grip yeah like the, it's got the gripping material at the back so very very cool looking um i mean there's there's already a company in new zealand with them vaporum have them i believe for about 80 dollars 
Yeah. Um, the other good thing about these is they do have two amp USB charging. Oh, so fast charge, basically. Fast charge. So you don't have to worry about what kind of socket you're using or what USB. Well, USB, using. yeah. And and that's something where like you and me have both experienced with the Megavolt. It is so nice being able to plug it in, and thirty minutes later, your battery's fully charged. Yeah, exactly. you know, it's it's not a case of like leaving it on charge overnight or something like that. So. Um, some of the things that people have said that they don't like too much about it, uh, is that the, uh, slipstream tank is fairly lacking in terms of fla uh, flavor and fairly annoying to refill. Um, people have reported button rattle as well, but you know, most mods need button rattle and we've gone over this in the show before. Um, and it is to basically, um, uh, it's to avoid the e-liquid getting in between there and jamming your button shut basically um you know that's that's what that's there for um the adapter as well has been reported to not sit flush with the mod um and the tank window doesn't line up with the mod window slot because it's got a little window so you can see your yeah. um your thing but then you know a lot of people have have said good positive things about it um for example the chipset that they are using which is i believe an uh a athon chipset uh they say that it ramps up really good uh and it's got good functionality uh it's got very safety orientated uh uh features yeah uh, it's very palm sized so that fits really comfortably in your hand um it's fairly versatile it comes with a tank adapter it charges faster than some of the vape pens that have like half the battery capacity. So very, you know, just, just good pointers of like indicating that it's a good little kind of starter going, mod or a good basher mod. Going back onto the uh, safety things, like it has dry hit detection and prevention. Like Ooh. Is it, that, that sounds freaking awesome, man. Yeah. Um, also another positive pass through vaping. Mm. so having two amp charge and being able to pass through at the same time i mean you couldn't do it with the megavolt that was my downfall to the megavolt. that was the one yeah the one <laughs> yeah. thing that i hated and I'm, I'm a bit iffy about this but it does have a 15 second cutoff yeah that's not I mean, too bad that's, that's great for if you're actually vaping on it but if it was the auto fire which i mean it's got the safety thing set up so it shouldn't but if it was it's going to auto fire for 15 seconds yeah but at the same time you know like the the whole auto firing for 15 second things if it has dry hit detection as they say it does yeah. you know it doesn't necessarily mean that it works very well but you know it is there if it detects that it's firing for that long i'm sure it would cut off anyway because it would dry hit before it were to finish anyway but moving on from that cam um what would you like to move on next um uh, oh that's that's hard i think Personally, we should jump on over to the five vape apps worth considering for your mobile devices, Tom. Because I really think this is a good one, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, as as we vape and we continue upon our journey of vaping, you know, there's so many things with vaping that you need to consider. It is a fairly mm. complex thing. I mean, it's very simple, but it's there's little things like coil building or nicotine strength um, when you're Even mixing your own engines. nicotine or creating juice um just very important little things that for example if you were to put the wrong amount of nicotine into your juice uh, it's not going to end up very well for you in terms of you you're probably going to get nick sick um that or you would have ruined that batch of juice so to speak um so we've got a couple that are both iso uh, ios and android based um apps yeah yeah to, to select from and i mean i've used a couple of these i've used vape boss which is one we will be talking about uh vape which i have not used which is i believe only android only yep um ohm's law which is also free and is only on ios which which definitely if you've got an iphone you you need like no matter what i would recommend something like that on your phone um and then there's the standard one that I think pretty much every New Zealander has on their cell phone, at least, and that's vape tool, especially if you're on Android. Yeah. And then e-liquid calculator. So if you are a mixer, that's another handy little thing. I think it 
is a dollar 99 cents to purchase you know and it's worth having it means you can keep all your recipes on yourself if you're out and about or you're at a friend's house mixing you've got it mm. um i don't know if you want to touch on vape tools since we have both used it yep so vape, vape tool is just a really good you know really good tool to have in the sense that you've got your coil calculator and all that kind of stuff so it's a case of when you're building coils you kind of want a indication of what sort of ohms you're gonna you're gonna get out of your coil um instead of for example doing a 20 wrap and you've ended up wasting you know 10 wraps worth because you don't need 20 wraps uh in order to hit your desired ohms um any anyone who's vaping and who uses you know the rdas or rtas it's it's a really good tool to have where you just get quick calculations you put in what wire you're using what your target resistance is what inner diameter you want it to be and it gives spits you out with how many wraps you need and you know you can do that across varying metals and varying coil types um it's just handy to have in your pocket especially if you're out and about and you don't remember off the top of your head and it kind of takes off the the pressure of knowing ohm's law you know in the sense that like you you know how many amps your your build's going to be drawing because it tells you and all that kind of stuff so it's definitely one to have yeah i mean i i really Honestly, I use it pretty much daily, dude. Um, Vapetool, be it for e-liquid side of things, battery, mm. amp-wise, or building. Um, I'm just about to open up the Vape Boss tool right now. Uh, I will provide a link to all of these on <coughs> in the in, description in, in our description or wherever we actually post this. I have no clue where we're going to put it. Oh, well, we more, find more than likely put it on YouTube. Um, so while Cameron's dealing to that, um, basically I'll quickly just shoot over. So I'm just going to gonna shoot over to e-liquid calculator. So basically, as Cameron said, uh, e-liquid calculator is basically a way to record uh, your juice recipes. Uh, and it allows you to measure and portion perfect levels of PG and VG. And then it also recommends appropriate balances of nicotine um, and the flavorings and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you can change the um, the system that it uses in terms of millimeters, uh, sorry, milliliters, uh, grams or drops or um, basically anything you want. Um, it does come in handy in terms of like saving you know like having a record of everything you've tried because you can just basically punch them in and then you can go back on it and if you want to change things you can if you find that you need to you know you, you make a new batch of said product you remove a certain percentage of the flavoring you can change it in there and then you've got it permanently there so that you've got a consistency um when you're making your own e-liquids uh consistency is one of the harder things in terms of e-liquids um to maintain consistency between batches uh so on that note i believe cameron's ready to talk about the vape boss. so vape boss to be honest um they're, they're still working on it in new zealand but it is more of an american app but it is great if you're looking at juices and mech mods and regulated mods and mm. RDAs, Jenny style tanks, RB TAs, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's it's I mean, basically a way for people to find nearby shops and yeah, locations. Yeah, nearby eh? shops, and you yeah. can also use it as a social media kind of hub. So kind of like a vapor's Instagram. Yep, um, and and also things. product reviews and stuff are on there. Yeah. So if you if you want to find um, out reviews of said product that you're looking to buy you can go on there and look up what people have commented on there uh, because at the end of the day you know reviewers are one thing um their opinions are great but it's always nice to have just a just users opinions as well yeah i mean you know? the other good thing as well is it does have an ohm's law calculator in the more tab as well as um the build guide sort of thing um also you can add like 
the juices you like, you can throw in there. Ha have a wish list. You can also check out a lot of uh, Grim Green's video reviews, hmm. which I mean, I personally love watching his reviews. Some nights Same I'll here. just sleep to them. Um, That's and weird. Then, yeah, it sounds weird. But <laughs> it's like when vaping pretty much takes over your life, you yeah. just end up being on vape stuff or not. Oh, for sure. And it also does have your preferred. Um, shops as well yes yeah. as, as we were saying about so you can shops. save stuff like that but again yeah, in new zealand that. it's probably not you know all sussed out but they're working it's, on it yeah I it's have, definitely coming i have talked to them about it that was one company i actually emailed to mm. try and sort out getting something done in new zealand because we really do need it um there is a demand for it yeah for sure um so I'm basically sure the the vape app uh, which is available only to Android, uh, is a tool that you can manage and track your gear and accessories, calculate expenses, uh, see personal stats, uh, like money you've saved on cigarettes and all that kind of stuff. So again, it's a, it's a very good um, track keeping um, tool in the sense that you can kind of see where, where you're going with it. Um, you can kind of allocate you know, if you want a new mod and all that stuff, once you've saved X amount on okay. not buying smokes, you know, you can spend that money. But then there's the other thing on that. And I'm like, oh no, seeing how much you've actually spent on your gear. Yeah, oh, that oh, too. Oh. Ouch. Um, I personally love that Ohm's Law app. I do have it on the iPad. Um, yeah. It, it pretty much is, as it states, um, the Swiss army knife of vaping stuff. Yeah. Pretty much like apps um because if you're building you should know your ohm's law and this thing is pretty damn accurate to do with voltage wattage resistance mm. current power all that sort of thing it's it's just a good way to to kind of remove the math out of the equation yeah. in terms of you know human error is something that does exist and we're all very aware of it i'm sure we've all come across it in our lifetimes um but it kind of eliminates that sense of human error of ohm's law calculations and does all the difficult maths for you so that's that's definitely a bonus um it is a shame that it's only on ios due to yep. the android users out there uh personally i only own an ipod uh, in terms of ios devices and i don't think i'll ever swap but hey that's Neither. something different I, I love my android phones but obviously the ipad so it's great yeah like that. yeah exactly so on on that note i think it kind of concludes that that little segment of the top uh vaping apps that we would recommend having on your devices um you know these these are just handy things to have you don't have to have every single one of them because a lot of them do have features that kind of tie on, tie into each other yeah, um so. and then you know of course there's ones that are only available on android and only available on ios so the ones they kind of do their own jobs anyway so very very nice little set list there but uh on that note uh i do believe we're going to move into our next little segment tonight which is e-liquid so e-liquid expiration um that's not something that a lot of us uh think about uh when we buy our e-liquid and a lot of us store it and you know we'll sometimes forget that there's a bottle in our glove box in our car and then find it after six months and go nuts on it um exactly but yeah like i mean i mean to go like to start on this i i always assumed that nicotine e-liquid would last you know 12 months hmm. but it turns out it should be perfectly fine if you store it properly correctly for two years dude like, yeah two years is a long long time to keep e-liquid i mean if it lasts that long, and, on you. And even even then, if you were to, to store it in an ideal case, so light proof uh, bottles, for example, on a shelf or like in a dark place, yep. it's, it can last longer than that. Um, not recommended to, to do so, but you know, it, it can last longer than the two years if it is in the perfect conditions. Yep. Um, another great place to store your e-liquid is in your freezer. Um, so what, what storing your e-liquid in a freezer does is it slows down the steeping process. Um, so this is, this is where we're going more into the kind of sciencey side of it. Um, and you know, we're going to science the shit out of this as, um, as that Matt, as Matt Damon said in that movie, was it Matt Damon? Or was, was it Matt it? Damon? No, it was that movie, the moon. Sorry, my bad. Wrong movie, wrong actor. But anyway, 
Oh no, it was Matt Damon, wasn't it? On Mars, uh, uh, yeah, Last Martian or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so on that note, so you basically what you end up doing is you put all your e-liquid in the freezer. What that does is it stops it from steeping. So if you have a recipe, if you are a DIY mixer and you find that it's a, a shaken vape, as they call it, so basically something that you make and instantly it tastes great. Um, and then if you let it steep, it tastes very different. You don't like the taste of it being fully steeped, but you do like the taste of it fresh. Chuck it in the um, freezer and you will get that taste of it being freshly made for longer than if you were to leave it out of the uh, freezer. Um, most people store their nicotine in the freezer as well due to the fact that it does slow down the steeping process of the nicotine because if you leave your nicotine out in like, let's say a fridge or out you know, in, in a dark pantry, um, your nicotine actually does steep uh, and it does turn peppery. It, yeah, um, it oxidizes. It yeah. oxidizes, changes color and goes like a very distinctive kind of pepperiness to it. Um, but with the oxidization, just, just to add to that, it doesn't actually affect the potency or the dangerousness of no. nicotine. So it just, it just modifies the flavor <clears throat> yeah. with like juice, you know, juice, yeah. juice flavor gets modified with steeping. And that's where, for example, in my case, so there's a juice that I make where straight away it's ready. Um, and you can vape it and it tastes great. But then there's another juice I make where if you taste it straight away, it's got the weirdest taste you can pop possibly imagine. And if you leave it a couple weeks, then it's mint. Uh, and then there's another one that I make that after a month's time, it is golden. And I'm sure Cam knows which one that one is. Oh yeah, Milly Philly. Um, just in case we have a <laughs> bottle on my desk. But yeah, so that's that's just something that, you know, it's it's very overlooked, um, the expiration of, uh, of e-liquid. But, you know, like let's say you were to leave a bottle half open on on a countertop in the sunlight and it's a clear bottle you know yeah it's not gonna last that long at mm -hmm. all you will you will run into a very different taste uh in your e-liquid um the the basic thing to do is to uh look at the the e-liquid um, so see how it looks, see if it's changed color or if you see anything strange, uh, if it smells weird, uh, compared to how it used to smell, uh, then toss it out basically. Uh, and if the e-liquid is clear and free of solids, if there are solids in your e-liquid, just toss it out. Don't even, don't even bother trying to don't even that. think about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but those are three telltale signs. If it looks fine, smells fine. There's no solids, no nothing, uh, minor color change. You're fine to vape it basically. Um, but that's, that's, you know, that's where you go with that one. All right. So as a last topic today, cause we are, we are getting there in terms of time. It has been, you know, a decent amount of time now. We're, not, we're trying to make these podcasts a bit shorter, a bit more to the point than the shows. Um, so going on to the last topic, uh, Cam, actually we've got two more to go. We've got uh, the air sampling and then we've got nicotine, uh, which is basically, you know, this, this, um this compound this chemical compound that has a bad reputation um so we will talk about do you want to do the air sampling last or you want to do the air sampling now um i don't know man up, up to you really all right so let's go into the air sampling so okay, this is something works. we slightly touched upon on our last episode of the vaping here uh, which was that they, uh, the Vaping Post have released this um, little article about air sampling uh, that confirms that secondhand vapor is harmless, um, which is a great, great yeah. kind of <clears throat> move I for mean, us. Personally, this, this really excites me having this piece of information. Um, like the air sampling, it says there's no nicotine found in the air. None of these real, like what you'd class as dangerous chemicals mm. in the air 
Um, the only thing that was found in the air was formaldehyde at seven particles per whatever it is. So it's it's not that much anyway. So basically, um, the the way they go about the the formaldehyde is that the level of formaldehyde detected is consistent with levels normally found in indoor and outdoor air levels under baseline conditions. Yep. So it is zero difference to what you'd find outdoors or indoors in a non vapor non smoker's house, and you know so on and so and forth. And the other two things was uh, ethanol, which mm -hmm. is alcohol, and isopropyl alcohol, which, which is you know, is basically there anyway, in most cases. Um, and there were no, no visible levels of any, da sorry, no dangerous levels of any hazardous chemicals or anything like that. And this is, this is where I want to go into the more personal side of it in the sense that like, I'm sure that you have come across it as well, Cam, of someone that you know, or, you know, someone's been told that you've seen that they've reported it, that, that for example, myself, um, being a vapor and people know that I vape, uh, I've heard many times from friends or family or employees, uh, or employers, uh, that, you know, what about vaping and like, you know, the, the whole side effects and, yeah. and what, what am I inhaling when you're vaping next to me and all that kind of stuff. This is, this is where there's so much misconception in terms of what vaping actually does. One of the biggest things, um, that that i've heard personally is that i've i've started a new job not too long ago um and my my current employer uh knows that i vape or that at least that i own a juice company and so on and so forth um and that's that's where you know he was talking to me about diacetyl and popcorn lung um and that's that's something that's very very you know it's very misconstrued what people find yeah. about that this is this is again a case of like some media organization kind of coming up with some dirt on a subject you know it's it's kind of like where they they don't do any research but they claim to know everything and personally that's how i see it at least um but diacetyl is one one thing that's very commonly heard amongst vapors diacetyl and popcorn lung uh, so diacetyl is a, a butter flavoring that they use in the USA, or they used to use in the USA, um, to flavor their popcorn, hence the name popcorn lung. Um, but basically what diacetyl does to you is it kind of destroys the inside of your lungs slowly over time. Um, the most e-liquids in New Zealand contains zero diacetyl. And by most, I generally mean every single one. Um, if there is diacetyl in an e-liquid, they ha they will put it on their bottle or they will tell you about it somehow, um, is what I've found at least so far. Um, and I mean, the, the amount of diacetyl found in e-liquid is really, really, really small. Yeah, it's there's, minute. There's more, more diacetyl found in a cigarette than there is yeah. in e-liquid. And, so. and the thing is, is that diacetyl is found in most cigarettes as well. So it's mm. not a case of like, you know some cigarettes it's it's most um it's definitely something that it's that's there but again you know it's you will hear it from a family member or a friend or something you know but what about popcorn lung and that's where you just turn around and just say look there's plenty of documentation royal college of physicians is one of the most reliable sources for all that is vaping uh, so that's the uk royal college of um thing um physicians, yeah. physicians. <laughs> um so that's probably your most reliable source and that's where you say look go check out the reports um and kind of end the conversation there because otherwise you can be there I mean, talking yeah, about diastole I've, for I've hours had lectures and lectures about it you know oh vaping is going to kill you blah 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 yeah you're gonna get popcorn lung blah 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 and you're just like dude Wait until I get home. I'm going to send you a bunch of links, read yeah. them all, and then come back to me. Exactly. Say, mm. But what's what's quite funny as well is that when you're vaping and, like, for example, you catch a cold, you know, like something that's very common amongst anyone else, and you're, like, be oh. coughing, and someone's like, oh, you don't think that's your vaping doing that to you? And you're like, please, man, I've got a flu. Like, you get a flu as well. What are you on about? You know, it's just silly things, and it's really people nitpicking about, you well, know, I mean, what vaping guess... is doing. Yeah, I guess vaping still has that kind of... Um, well, it's got a stigma attached a to stigma, it. Yeah, yeah, a stigma attached. So especially when... with like the anti-vaping stuff that's been happening in the States. Exactly, yeah. It's kind of making its way over here now. Um, 
Well, I don't think it is, to be honest. I don't think it's it's massively manifesting itself in the sense that it's not anywhere near the scale of US. But oh, there is there is media here as well where they, they have these sources that are these typical, you know, American studies, you know, and I say studies as in like in quotation marks, studies, um, where they report vaping as being a, a negative thing towards you. Um, but but again, you know, we, we have both seen what vaping has done to us personally and then other people as well um you know i've seen a, a man who was smoking for 40 plus years uh quit smoking and he's still using e-cigarettes and doing really well you know he's recovered taste uh like the sense of taste sense of smell uh and he doesn't smell like smokes all the time you know it's it's just it's a very beneficial thing granted they're saying it's 95 percent safer than cigarettes but most studies now are coming out with a lot of uh, a lot of studies that are indicating that it's even possibly even better than that. Yeah, I've seen studies of possibly ninety seven percent kind of range. I mean, obviously it's it's not the the best thing to do. I mean, the best no. thing would be to do nothing and just breathe in air. But when you're breathing in air, you're still getting in formaldehyde and all the usual. Exactly, you're going to get the same stuff. Anyway, so. As as the one of the most recent studies from the the Royal College of Physicians says is that the toxins in a vapor's body are the same as a non-smoker. So yeah, you know that that does say a lot in terms of what it's actually doing to you. Uh, another thing I've heard a lot as well is liquid in your lungs. Um, I mean, really, you know what? What do you think, chefs? Chefs must go home with like. You know, three liters worth of of water in their lungs vapor, in that case. And oil vapor. Yeah, exactly. Much. Like it's so silly. You know, it's it's been proven time and time again that human lungs are basically designed to to take in that that um, you know the, that vapor in and expel it without leaving anything in there. You know, that's that's the whole point of of that little. Um, little fact there but on that note cameron i think we should uh, move on to our final topic for this podcast which is the whole thing about nicotine and why why does it have such a bad reputation I mean, and what yeah. what is nicotine and in terms of you know what where can it be found not in the vaping industry not in the smoking industry as well so as as most people would know nicotine is is probably one of if not the most understood i don't want to say drug but you know in quotations drug yeah um i mean it is a mild stimulant uh but i think the main reason for that is the whole it's found in tobacco um and they seem to assume that because it's in tobacco that it's 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 the bad thing um and you'll probably agree with that tom but i mean you can find nicotine and so many different things yeah especially i mean you can, nightshade family yeah so basically um nicotine is an alcohol it found in many plants uh in the nightshade family so the nightshade family includes tobacco of course uh eggplants tomatoes potatoes uh cauliflowers amongst those as well uh and and that's the thing like it's it's in stuff you eat normally so when yeah. when people are like you know nicotine's bad for you for example you know, someone there sitting there and eating an eggplant and saying nicotine's bad for you, then you can turn around and be like, well, you're ingesting it right now. So, you know, F you. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the the thing is, though, that with with like the, the vegetable side of things is it's less concentrated. Yeah, than, in, it's, in the it's not there in massive amounts, yeah. um, but it is it is still there. I mean, it's yeah. it's something that is there. Um like like they say basically is that you know you you could enjoy uh, ingest a lot of of eggplants and cauliflowers and tomatoes and potatoes and all that kind of stuff and you would probably never register on a nicotine test but it's just it is present in those foods um but yeah so so i mean you know um a, a lot of things as well is um so so this whole negative thing about it um is that anything that is that is smoke you know anything that isn't just a, a vapor 
Uh, so a vapor and a smoke are two different things. Smoke is pro is is produced by combusting something, so incinerating yep. it uh, and destroying it basically. Uh, versus a vapor is produced by vaporizing it. You know, so it's it's very different in ter in terms of how you know what what comes out of it. Um, if you look at smoke next to vapor, it, you know, you physically look at them, they're two different things. Um, so the smoking side of things is, is where it comes into that negative aspect. You know, you're, you're burning dead plant matter is basically what you're doing when you're smoking something. Um, but when you're vaping, you're just vaporizing the, the e-liquid, which in most cases is derived from tobacco. Uh, we are now seeing a, a slight uprise in terms of synthetic nicotine as well. Um, you know, synthetic nicotine being created in a lab uh, could be a bit different in terms of the uh, benefits of it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the nicotine that we're getting from plants is from wild tobacco rather than the actual tobacco plant mm. that is used for cigarettes i guess you would would be the easiest way to explain it. and they're also using that for medical stuff in the sense that they're giving it to alzheimer's patients to help them focus because <clears throat> nicotine is technically a stimulant within reason yeah and um, it's also it's a relaxant. Much like drinking a caffeine like you know it can be a relaxant as well it depends how yeah. your body basically processes it it's it's in a way it's a really bad analogy but it's kind of like thinking about a diabetic and sugar how their body processes it you know you're lacking the um come on help me out help a brother out here you're lacking the you're lacking what when you're a diabetic you when you're a diabetic you're lacking the... uh d d d d insulin there insulin. we go that's the one so you're you're lacking insulin so basically your body processes that sugar differently um hence why they take insulin shots so in a way uh, you know it's a way to think about it in the sense that your body can process it differently and you can be relaxing or it can be stimulant stimulating to you um so it's definitely something that you know when when you say that you're smoking you know people think is well the biggest thing you think about right because it is so out there is nicotine that's what people are very oriented towards when they think about smoking and they think that 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 is what's bad that's the carcinogen you know that's all that stuff but in in actual reality so far as far as the again all these um all these tests have come out from the Royal College of Physicians and so on and so forth. The carcinogenic part of a cigarette is not at all the, the nicotine, but it's the tar and the, you know, all those other chemicals that are in that cigarette. Whereas the nicotine is just there as a stimulant. It is, it is, yeah. it is, you know, it's like caffeine basically. It's, it's in the same family. All the enes are a family. Um, it's definitely a bit different. So moving on from that, um, moving on from that, Tom. Yeah. So moving on from that, I think I think from there we're pretty much going to conclude this this podcast um so the very first podcast that we do um just as it's going into the the hour right about now okay so damn hopefully you guys enjoyed this podcast um we're going to be trying to do this as a weekly thing um along with the show basically um so we will have the show every monday 9 p.m you know, 8.30, 9 p.m., 8-ish, whatever. Whatever time it is, we'll post the post. You know, you guys will see it anyway. Um, but we will do the podcast as we go, kind of figure out when we're doing it. Uh, we will post posts on our page where you can ask us questions. Uh, we will answer them on the show. If you don't want your name disclosed, just put in between parentheses, anonymous, and then we won't disclose your name. Uh, if you're happy with us saying your name, you know, blah, 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 asks, blah, then you know just don't put that anonymous thing uh, anonymous thing there um 
so that's that's just how we're going to go about that and we'll we will try and do this weekly and and try and keep up to date with the news and and in terms of what new devices are coming out new technology in terms of vaping you know like new batteries and so on and so forth um and we'll kind of go from there and see see where this takes us but hopefully you guys enjoyed this little audio segment uh from the vaping ewe myself tom and uh cameron who's staring into the distance right now as if he's got nothing better to do um but yeah on that note i think we're gonna we're gonna call it here and um if there's anything you want to say cam say it now otherwise i mean rest in peace thanks you you pretty much said it all thanks for uh tuning in and listening to us talk for however long it's been um and yeah make sure to check out the uh videos and also if you do have questions as tom said comment on the post on our facebook page and get involved because it would be Hmm. or comment comment below wherever we post this like for example if this is on youtube and it's a podcast on youtube just comment below what you'd like us to answer you know and we, we we will look at both the youtube and the facebook and kind of go from there but on that note we shall see you next week enjoy the rest of your week guys thank you for tuning in